So welcome back to Fenrir and to my bathroom. And today we're going to do a bit something a bit different. I get a lot of questions, funnily enough, about a puppy's first bath, how to get a puppy used to being bathed. Your puppy freaks out when you try and bath them. Um, on and on and on and on it goes. So I thought, you know what, we've got a really lovely opportunity that we've got a very stinky English Mastiff puppy down here that has been exploring ponds and mud and just really needs a bath now. It's been a little bit too late, um, a little bit too long. And we thought, let's film us doing the first bath. This isn't going to be like a, I'm not a dog groomer. This isn't a perfection of how to bathe a dog. It's how I bathe a dog, but I want to put more of a focus on it from how to get a dog to enjoy bathing a dog, more from like a behavior and canine psychology perspective. And a lot of it is going to be me waffling on about the importance of leadership and a dog that looks up to you for guidance and direction, like I talk about every single video. There's another classic example. She may or may not love this bath. She might hate it when she first goes in, but we're just going to do it. And I'm going to go through the process and through her trusting me and looking up to me for guidance and direction, she's going to understand that there is nothing to be worried about because I'm not worried and we're going through this process together. If you have that relationship that's built on leadership, your puppy will get to a point where they will happily accept anything, providing your leading by example with that new process. So no more waffling, let's dive straight into it. So no point in wasting any time. And again, leadership is around confidence and assertiveness. So there's literally no point in messing around. We're going straight in the bath. Now again, I'm gonna let her acclimatize to it. First time she's been in a bath, but I'm not pandering to this fear, nor am I gonna overly reward her or pay her like a lot of people will. This, I like to save my treats for high value rewards and to let them know when they're displaying exceptional behavior. Having a bath for me is very normal. I'm asking you to be calm, quiet, and well-mannered, and that's what I expect of you, and I'm not gonna pay you for doing it. I'm not gonna pay my child 10 pound every time they have a bath. They have a bath because as their dad, I tell them that they need to have a bath so that they're clean, well-groomed, and not stinky. So already you can see that I'm getting a little bit of, she's looking up to me, she's a little bit confused, she's just checking everything's okay. And now that she's relaxing a little bit, her body language is fine, I'm gonna give her a little bit of praise and attention. Again, no need, and we're just gonna dive straight in. How I like to do it is just get them nice and wet to start with, head to tail. Obviously, I'm gonna be careful of their face and their ears. But in terms of their coat, I'm just going to get them nice and wet. And this is another excellent opportunity for socialization. It gets them used to being handled. Um, this sets them up really well for if you want to take them to professional groomers or even just them going to the vet. Now, when I do get close to their face, just to keep their eyes careful, I'll just cover their head. But again, there's no need to pander to your dogs or baby them. Just kind of get in, get it done. No stress from your part. You stay calm and relaxed yourself. And if you have a good relationship, like me and Eileen have, just the simple act of me being calm and relaxed and enjoying this experience means that she'll remain calm, relaxed. And that's why I preach about it so much. So again, now we've got it nice and wet. I'm just going to get all that in. Use it as a really good opportunity for it used to being handled. So I'm going to go under her undercarriage. I'm now going to start going up, going between the pads of her paws. Make sure I get the water in there, clean out any grime or grit. And again, she's just gonna stand here and let me do it because we've been working on this kind of process of checking her paws, her remaining good manner. She's not crying, barking, yapping, trying to chew me. She knows that as her calm, consistent leader, my expectations for her are for her to remain well-mannered, calm and quiet. And if that happens, like she's displaying this lovely behavior now, I'm gonna let her know that I appreciate it. And that can be no more than just a ruffle behind the ears. I don't need to sit here with a bag of treats. We just crack on and we get it done. So now we're gonna move on to a bit of shampoo, dog specific shampoo. And again, like I say, I'm no expert groomer, but what I do know is that I've got a stinky dog that needs a good wash. So I put a bit of shampoo and then again, I'm just gonna rub it in, lather her up, and I'm gonna go all the way underneath around the neck, be careful of her ears, careful of her face, but again, I'm gonna use it as a good opportunity to get her used to being handled. I'm not gonna be soft, I'm just gonna crack on, get it done, obviously not hurting her, but nor am I refraining and kind of babying or pandering. Again, I'm gonna get her feet nice and clean, get any grime or stinky stuff that gets collected in their paw pads out. Same again with this one. 
And again, guys, this is just an example, I think, of just assertive leadership. Stop, you don't need to baby your puppies or pander to them. This isn't a scared dog. She's quite comfortable, she's quite content, and she'll stay here for as long as I tell her this process is going. And the more we do this, the more we repeat it, I guarantee she'll find that this is actually a lovely opportunity where daddy gives me a really good belly rub and a nice massage. And it's actually something to look forward to. As long as he's calm and happy, then I'm calm and happy. And as you can see right now, you're not exactly stressing, are you? This doesn't come from me being lucky. This comes from all the work we've put in in the last month with Eileen to get her to trust in our leadership, to trust in us, to look up to us for guidance and direction, banging on about it over and over again. So again, now I'm nice and happy that she's clean head to toe. I'm just gonna make sure we rinse all that out nicely. And then obviously we get the fun part of trying to dry her without the hurricane of you getting wet through in the process. She's lovely, look how nice her coat is. She's got that like salt and pepper, those little flecks of black that are coming through. You are a beautiful girl, Eileen. I'll tell you that for free. So again, no need to mess around. Just get in, get stuck in, get the job done. Now we're in that stage, I'm gonna let the plug out. And as you can see, all that grot that was on her is now in that water, but we're in the danger zone. <clears throat> of shaky dogs, that wasn't too bad. But again, the same principle, not gonna mess around. Straight in, let's get you out, missus. Straight down, and then again, no need to baby them, pander them, just get stuck in. This is happening, you don't need to panic. Everything's okay, enjoy. Oh yes, oh you're a good girl, yes. So we're gonna get as much of that off as we can, and then, run to the hills before she shakes herself down. It means that I need to have a bath and get changed as well. And then probably we might see an English Mastiff Zoomies moment because it's very common once dogs have got out of the bath and are drying off to have the Zoomies. So there we go. Jobs are good and no need to mess around. One happy puppy that now is clean, smells nice and ready to uh, Go tackle the big bad world and get filthy again so that we can keep having to do this. Off you go Eileen, be free!